Morning. Well, if yesterday's story was extraordinary, just wait until you've read Ezekiel chapter 1. Now, unless you are really familiar with it, and most people are not, please hit the pause button right now. Go and get a Bible because you're going to need it. If you're struggling to find it, Ezekiel is after Jeremiah and it's before Daniel. Please go and do that now. Well, if you've just spent some time finding and, and reading this chapter, I can pretty much guarantee you'll have spent 10 minutes reading it and about 20 minutes rereading it, trying to get your head around this extraordinary vision of weird four-faced creatures and wheels that sound like gyroscopes. We get our phrase wheels within wheels from this scripture. And it's got an overhead throne as well. This vision was shown to Ezekiel just as he reached the age of a working priest, about 30. But with no Jerusalem temple to serve in because they were in Babylon, they'd been exiled. Now, I admit, I, I just don't have a wonderful visual imagination. So if you're interested, there are two or three creative attempts at animating this vision on YouTube. But that's not our focus today. It's the throne Ezekiel saw and its occupant. Now above the vault over the angel's heads was something like a throne of lapis lazuli again. And on the throne there's a figure like that of a man. And I saw that from what appeared to be his waist up, he looked like glowing metal, as if full of fire. And from there down, he looked like fire. And brilliant light surrounded him. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the radiance around him. Who is that? Well, the last verse of Ezekiel 1 explains this was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Now, that's quite a mouthful, isn't it, really? Because if that's Yahweh, why not just say so? Now flip back to Exodus 24. Now you remember from yesterday that Moses and the 70 elders saw the God of Israel and they couldn't believe that they'd lived to tell the tale. Incidentally, it never says they saw his face and it doesn't here either. But the New Testament repeats three times that no one has ever seen Yahweh. So who did the elders actually see in Exodus? Who did Ezekiel see? Well, ID this person properly tomorrow. And I have one more thing to add. When the elders saw the God of Israel, the Hebrew text doesn't use the conventional Hebrew word for see. It means that they fixed their gaze. They stared. Well, I would, wouldn't you? Could you help it? They fixed their gaze. And that might be ringing bells for you because this is what the book of Hebrews refers to when it says, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Which reminds me of an old chorus from decades ago. You may know it, you may not. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And dare I say that the appropriate response that when we see Jesus is, like Ezekiel did, to fall flat on our faces. And more of that later too. So let's fix our eyes on Jesus and spend a little time musing on the pioneer 
a perfecter of our faith. Grace and peace to you.